I will go in your stead. Would you pray with me? In loving memory of those who have gone on before, we will never forget them and cannot wait until we see them again. Hold them, O oh God, in our hearts. Amen and amen. My friends, we are, each of us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Our ancestors, our family, whichever loved one you have that has gone on before. They all leave an imprint on your heart, an eternal reminder that of you, that of you, more is required. That from you can come great things, and that the departed remain here with us. That the departed remain here with us, guiding us from beyond towards greater things. You can feel it, my friends. You can feel it, that tug of memory. It calls out to you like a pool. A persistent feeling like a rope on the heart. Like a rope on the heart leading you forward. Church, I believe in what is called vocation. Vocation. It's that meaning that in our lives, we are each of us called to a higher purpose. A deeper purpose. Something bigger than ourselves. And I believe that as we live, we can, through prayer, or discernment, or fortuitously stumbling into it like a big opening door, one morning discover what that call, what that vocation is. My father, the late Reverend James L. Brewer Cowart, believed in vocation like he believed in us. He always believed that we are to step into our calling like putting on a pair of shoes in the morning. Rising each day to look for a new opportunity for transforming the planet that we call home. That we call home. He always loved quoting and living into Anne Lamont's line. How we spend our lives is, of course, how we spend our days. And Frederick Buechner's, the place where God calls you is a place where the world's deep hunger and the world's deep gladness meet. And he'd gone through enough listening sessions and thought processes of his own to discover where in the world that deep hunger was for him and where that deep gladness was for him. So he was great at church renewal, especially in urban settings, where he could utilize his team building skills, tap into the community, and practice hospitality in a diverse setting. And there and there, he could meet hunger and homelessness and helplessness head on with a smile. Head on with a smile. A warm meal. And a place for all of us at the table. With a smile, a warm meal, and a place for all of us at the table. And we can too. And we can too. What can we learn from the departed? From all the names that we read earlier, from the soft notes of the bell sounding out across the sanctuary. On this Memorial Day week, we are reminded that this church and our country, indeed every country, is built by such saints. That we are built by such saints. That our very presence here, our very presence here is a testament 
and as thanks to those who've gone on before us. And we will gladly spend our days thanking them for their service. Thanking them for their service. We miss them, but know that they are here with us even now. From where do we draw inspiration? The Bible is another, another source of our hope. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Listen for the word of God. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the front the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings, with two wings that covered their faces, with another two that covered their feet, and with the last two they were flying, and they were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. <coughs> Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth. Saying, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord crying out and saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> what is your initial reaction hearing that scripture read out loud? I would invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Find yourself, my friends, in an ornate throne room. Maybe not unlike a grand basilica or a tall edifice. And as your eyes adjust to the light, Change. You see above you angels with their many wings and beautiful features. Okay, so maybe you're a bit scared. That's natural. Your feet unsteady as you approach the altar, unsure of what these multi-winged things, creatures, beings, angels will do. And then you hear them. Begin to worship and sing, and you can relax. <sighs> you can relax. Okay, I know worship. I know what worship is. This isn't so bad. I've heard white Peter sing before. This is normal. Then you hear God. And a mighty voice calling out, and they come and place a hot coal on your tongue. And your first reaction is to volunteer for disciple duty? <laughs> Honestly, Isaiah 6 is a dramatic depiction, you can open your eyes, of a holy throne room and the six winged angels placing a live coal on the tongue. Um, seems pretty appropriate for disciple calls, doesn't it? It's a good description of what volunteering feels like in the church. It can feel like a hot hole. <laughs> it can feel like uh, God's talking like a hot potato, right? That you don't quite want to hold. You don't quite want to hold on to it. Kind of want to pass it to somebody else pretty quickly. That's natural. It's hard. And the path is not always straight. That's okay, though. That's okay, though. 
better, the world will be better for having heard your sermon. We'll be better. And when the words don't always come easily, and the call feels impossible, there will be glimpses of hope and love, sweet memories of those who have gone on before you, who have made the way for you, who have prepared the way for you. Images of countless ones who have spoken these words. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Central Christian Church, here we are today. Are we ready to say, send me? Are you ready? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes to the call today, to the call on your heart, because it will be worth it. Because it will be worth it. Because it will be the ride of your life. And because deep down, deep down you know, your ancestors and departed family and friends have already made the way easier. Have already made the way easier. They prepared you and they made you a little toolkit with everything that you're going to need. And they even made you a fun lunchbox with some snacks. And honestly, that pb and was bomb. Your mom made it for you. It has the corners cut off on the sides. You're going to eat it. You're going to eat that PB&J. You're going to stand up and be strong and greet the day and say, yes, God, I will go in their stead. I will go in their stead. I will live my life in memory of, in honor of those who have made me who I am. Who have made me. Who have made me. <clears throat> because I'm not alone. Because I never was. Because God's words live in my heart now, and it's on fire with like a great engine roaring forward. Because God's call is more than a tug on the heart. It's a ladder. And you're climbing upwards and onwards. Say yes. Say yes to God's call. You can feel it, my friends. The tug of memory. It calls out to you like a pool. A persistent feeling of a rope upon the heart, leading you forward. We will go in their stead.